All right, welcome back. It is Monday. With us, Allison Fields, veterinarian, taking your phone calls. What'd you just do? Did you do that again? I waved. You just waved. You're very good at that. Do you do it Left hand. Do you left handed or right handed? Both. Yeah, I am dexterous. Uh -huh. Impressive. Which hand, which arm do you play tennis with? Right? I haven't played tennis in okay. a really long time. Which, Probably right. What's your lead hand when you're doing surgery on a dog? Um, it switches. Um, really? I suture with both hands. So I close one direction with my right hand and back the other way with my left hand. Um, a very skilled I'm surgeon. a left-handed cartwheeler. <laughs> um, that apparently is also, uh, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, either hand, that's good. I, mean, I think yeah. that's, a good, that's a good skill. I'm, I'm a little bit that way. All right, let's go to, I'm mostly left-handed though. Let's go to Brian. Brian, good morning. Hey, hey Brian. good morning. Hey, Brian, what's on your mind, my friend? I, I emailed you a picture of Buddy and you can see oh. on his arms where he's losing that hair. And um, I'm taking him back to Casey Damron. Yeah. Uh, the vet, she knows him, uh, my vet. This morning, and we're going to try some. He does pet palate and Eastern philosophy uh, veterinary care besides the traditional. Right. So we're, we're probably also going to be replacing his little collar that it's called a, a furinone collar. That right. It's a calming collar for him. And we've, we've shied away from the shots in his butt because. Too many of those steroid shots can be can be harmful. So, so we're going with the new philosophy. And I don't know if you can show her the little part on his leg. I don't have we my don't phone have with a, me. I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't bring my phone up. But <clears throat> oh, that's okay. Okay. It, it originally happened where he um, had an injury, and then he never he, he kept licking it. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Right, buddy. You want to say hi, buddy? <laughs> okay, good boy. But well, anyway, so, Casey, uh, Dr. Dameron is a, is a wonderful veterinarian, and I think that, you know, it, it is always um, interesting that if, you know, the Western philosophy or Eastern philosophy isn't working. That? What is um, it he does? He lot, practices he, what? <clears throat> his, uh, the other vet there, I think, is licensed with acupuncture, if I'm okay. not mistaken. Um, but he does a lot of Eastern medicine, um, so using more homeopathic and herbal stuff which in conjunction with Western medicine can, can just like in humans be very beneficial. Sure. Um, people need to understand though that some of the Eastern philosophies and or medications don't quite work in the same way for dogs and cats and can some of the um, herbs can be toxic to them. So you just need to make sure you're doing this through a veterinarian mm -hmm. is my point. Mm -hmm. um, and Dr. Dameron is great and Dr. Smith is also out there and they're both very um, uh, well versed in that. And what do you say about a collar, a calming <coughs> collar? What are those? Um, it's a pheromone collar oh, okay. and it Has is, a scent. It, it, which we really can't smell. Mm -hmm. Um, we use it a lot in our practice and we have a cat that comes in that's not real happy to be there, just super nervous. We'll spray it on a towel and then kind of drape the towel over their carrier and it kind of soothes them. They also make that the same company makes the same kind of thing for dogs. Does um, that help during uh, like 4th of July and things like that in addition to a thunder shirt or is it a different <coughs> condition you're excuse treating? Excuse me. It can. Okay. Um, that is probably not going to help for fireworks as much as other stuff, but in conjunction, it can help. They make diffusers that you can plug into the wall. Huh. They make collars. Cool. They make pet wipes so you can, you know, just wipe mm -hmm. their little head and kind of get their that smell. It, I forget what, exactly what it has in it, but it does uh, calm them, soothe yeah. them. I mean, not completely. It's not like they're like completely mm -hmm. docile at that point, but. Um, it can very much help. Very interesting. I didn't know about that. All right, let's go to Michelle. Michelle, good morning. Hello, Michelle. Hi. Hey, how can we help you? Good. Good. So I've got a 13-year-old shih tzu here, and she mm. is the best little dog in the world. She walks with me every day. Um, hmm. She's getting where she's getting a little feeble, and she doesn't want to get around very good, and I have to carry her when we walk now, but she's like right at 30 pounds. Yeah, she's heavy. Hmm. I lost weight. She's lost. She's gained the muscle. So, but she's got knots all over, and she licks her feet all the time. Doc, do you have any idea on which topic? On the feet mm -hmm. licking? 
Her feet. Okay. Her feet. She's licking her feet all the time. So all the time. That can be a lot of different things. It could be food allergies. It could be grass allergies. You know, there are some things that it can be. Have you taken her to the vet about this? Well, I did last year, and they just said that possibly maybe, you know, arthritis developing. And, you know, because she, whenever she goes to take off walking, she looks like a really old man. She just crisps around for So did the they bars. get her on any arthritis medicine? No, no. They didn't give me nothing like that because they, they wanted to make sure. Because I'm funny about, you know, medicine and stuff like that, but I make sure she gets her parvo and all that stuff. You know, I make sure she's healthy. But... The knots that are on her, do you know anything about those? Because they're coming up all yeah. over her. It's really hard to right. say anything without seeing or feeling the dog. Um, there are a lot of different kinds of knots and a lot of different things can be causing that. I would suggest that she go in and have a good exam. They can aspirate those knots and see what's in them. Um, I would suggest if she's walking around that poorly that we get her on some arthritis medication even though you're really careful and you want to make sure you're doing the right thing for her I also think that quality of life is very important and if she's painful let's make her feel better um, and then as for the foot licking I think that she probably needs a food trial which needs to be done under supervision by a veterinarian to make sure it's done appropriately so I think that you need to talk to your veterinarian about that and if you know you want to get a second opinion you can do that but I think that those are kind of what I just just listening to what you're saying I think we need to aspirate the lumps and see what they are I think she needs some arthritis medicine and she probably needs a food trial food trial do they lick sometimes because they're nervous nah. um I would say a 13 year old dog in the same household she's been in for 13 probably years not. probably not nerves okay and licking like that every once in a while that calls for the cone of shame Sometimes. Sometimes the cone Not of shame. Always. We've had to do that on Mash Tater on occasion because she'll just start licking her paw for whatever don't reason. Don't lie. You know that Deb puts it on you. Yeah, the cone of shame. Right? I don't lick my feet. No, but you get into things. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It would work with me. Let's go to Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Good morning. Good morning, Joyce. How can we help you? Well, I've got a major issue. Okay. I've got a 13-year-old miniature schnauzer. Uh -huh. He's had bladder surgery twice in the last three and a half years yeah. and the most recent one is beginning of May and since then he's had a bladder infection that we can't seem to get rid of mm. even did a urine culture test yeah been on four different antibiotics and right now he's on Zenequin uh -huh. 50 milligram yep and he also was on two vomiting meds because he had trouble and wouldn't eat his food. Hmm. Poor buddy. Now they think he might have Cushing's disease. Yeah, not well, great. Now he, he was taking Tramadol for his arthritis and back up until about a month ago. They think maybe, you know, that had something to do with the antibiotics. I don't know. But he's been on prescription diet food all this time. And he also has stage 4 periodontal disease. And I've spent about $1,200 on medicine trying to get rid of these antibiotics. Uh, I'm sure you have. So The surgery. Um, yeah. Is it schnauzer, she said? Men schnauzer. Okay. So schnauzers and miniature schnauz schnauzers are very prone to um, bladder stones. And we don't really know why. And every once in a while we run across one, sounds like your dog, that no matter what we recommend and the owner follows through with, and you know, we, we're doing everything, the owner's doing everything, and these dogs still get bladder stones. Um, and typically it, it sounds like might be struvite stones, they're caused from a low grade bladder infection. And so then the question is, how do we get rid of this? I'm glad they did a culture and sensitivity that um, can help us. Um, you just might wanna make sure that we stay on and if, if the bacteria was sensitive to the Xenoquin, that you stay on that for, you know, I'm sure your doctor's told you at least like 14 to 21 days um, to make sure that we kind of beat it into submission. Sometimes we don't treat long enough with antibiotics and bladder infections are so hmm. tricky. You, you know, <clears throat> we think they're gone, but they're really not. Um, so the other thing that I've done in the past with these animals is either do like a pulse therapy of antibiotics. So we'll have them on antibiotics for two to three weeks every 10 weeks, which isn't great for the pocketbook, but at least mm. it keeps the dog comfortable. 
Um, so I'm sorry. I know this is a, a, a frustrating situation to be in, and you're not alone. There are other Schnauzer owners out there who have these issues as well. As for the Cushing's, um, unless the dog is clinical for it, you know, drinking a lot, urinating a lot, um, having some internet, intermittent vomiting or diarrhea, usually the recommendation from the internal medicine specialist is that we don't treat the Cushing's disease unless we're having clinical signs because it's expensive. You know, there's, there's a lot that has to go on with treating that in the way of testing and medicine and everything else. And so if they're not clinical, Usually we don't treat. And Cushing's just, uh, is it an autoimmune or is no, that No, Cushing's is a disease in the adrenal system where the body is making too much endogenous steroids. Our body makes steroids. Okay. Our adrenal glands make steroids and we use them. Um, but it makes this much. And so, and what, so what, and the result, we just got about 20 seconds. The symptom would be from Cushing's. Well, uh, what I was just talking about. Vomiting. Vomiting and all that. It's okay, all I didn't intermittent. Know There's no. a ton of symptoms, symptoms and they don't all have to happen and they can or can't happen. I hope that helps her. She's a good I owner. Know. She's really caring for that animal. Hey, Allison, you care for animals. Yes. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. All right. She good will to be, be back, everyone. It's good I to will. have her on. We'll be back with a programming note about tomorrow, right after this.